there is something that is exciting with getting a quick win against your opponent in the game of chess. For a beginner player, encountering these lines and manoeuvres for the very first time can seem like discovering a secret society. My name is Michael Tan, Vituar is a chess noob, and I recently published my new book, 50 plus 2 Chess Quick Wins, Tactical Ideas for Exciting Chess for Beginner Players. Now, this is the first of a series of videos where I will cover the section in the book uh, where I describe and explain some of the tactical ideas, themes and motifs which often underlie these quick win games. This first video will be a bit of an introduction. Now, for those of you um, sort of at the beginning of your chess journey, and certainly for me, at a certain point you discover the existence of the fool's mate, the shortest checkmate that is available with only two moves. Well, let's go have a look at it. So here, white needs to lead with f3. Now, this already is a bit of an inaccuracy. Now, black will also play their king's pawn, so let's say e6. And now, white makes the fatal blunder with g4. You can see a blunder. You can see the computer can see a mate in one. Can you see the mate in one? That's right. Queen to h4 checkmate. And basically, you can see that what has happened is that white has critically weakened their, uh, their diagonal to the king, uh, along the king side. And when I first discovered this line, it's very interesting, but at the same time, it's also a little bit underwhelming. Because when will you ever see this? Like, you know, to actually get this fool's mate uh, line kind of requires a bit of a conspiracy between uh, the two players. It's sort of a contrived line to make checkmate as quick as possible. However, the thing to realize in the fool's mate isn't that you need to memorize this line or this line is profound in some way, but rather some of the tactical ideas which are in this game, in this line, which potentially is uh, generalizable, or transferable to other openings. And one of the most important insights out of this is the fact that moving the F pawn uh, early is potentially very weakening. Because how is this checkmate even possible? Simply along this light square diagonal, you will notice that there is nothing that can actually directly block or defend these squares after the F pawn and the G pawn move. So when the queen attacks down this diagonal, oops, attacks down this diagonal, you will notice that the king can't move out of the way and none of white's pieces can block these squares or capture the queen. Nothing is attacking the H4 square. So the movement of the F pawn and then the G pawn critically weakens the defense of the white king. So this is potentially an important insight to realize, both for our own defenses, but also in terms of looking at potential threats against our opponent. So the black equivalent will be this diagonal here. The other you know, thing to note is potentially wayward queen, so early queen moves, which are generally acknowledged to be bad, and they usually are, can potentially be very powerful in specific situations. So again, something to note as a tactical resource. Now, as I said, this initially can seem a little bit underwhelming, and it's probably not the first quick win that beginners will, uh, will lose against, or what they will start trying against your opponent. So that is the scholar's mate. So what is a scholar's mate? Well, it starts out um, much more normally. So first e4, e5, very normal. Then bishop 
to c4 so the bishop's opening it's a reasonable opening it's not terribly bad and the tactical idea is that we're targeting the weak f pawn so that's f7 for the black uh, for the play of the black pieces and f2 for white here black plays a normal developing move knight to c6 very normal and here we make use of that idea we discovered before that potentially early queen moves can be powerful. So queen to h5, and now we are double attacking that pawn. So placing pressure on that weak f pawn. Why is it weak? Well, one of the special traits of the f pawn at the beginning of the game is that it's only defended by one piece and that is the king It's not defended by any other pieces and potentially when we have a double attack the king won't be able to capture it back because the king can't put itself into check now here for the uh, unsuspecting unwary play of the black pieces i say oh look i don't like the queen there I'm going to try to, you know, attack the queen with a normal developing move like a knight. And unfortunately, that's a blunder because black hasn't addressed uh, that attack on f7. Queen captures f7. It's a check. The king can't move anywhere uh, else. Nothing can capture the queen and mate. So that's the scholar's mate. Now, for many beginner players, this may be the very first quick win they discover. And it can come, as I said, as a bit of a shock because you just don't necessarily expect to be losing so quickly. Uh, but for the player using this, it also kind of feels like they discovered a cheat code. It feels like it's hard to defend against and may, may even get a run of wins. However, it actually is fairly easy to defend against. So in this position, you can't play the knight. That's obviously bad, but you play the pawn. Pawn, the G pawn forward to G6, attacking the queen. The queen now needs to move a second time. Generally, there's only two good squares for it to go, either queen to F3 or queen all the way back to D1. For the, uh, for the scholar's mate, usually at the very early beginner level, people might fall for it once or twice, then they discover a way to defend against it because they might try to use it themselves, and generally they discover this. And one of the things is you just don't see the, uh, the scholar's mate outside of beginner level. So even at the intermediate level, you don't see it anymore. And fundamentally, that is because it's bad. Now, very often, white will try to play a different move order. So maybe the wayward queen attack or maybe secondary or tertiary attacking lines after the initial attack fails. Ultimately, it's not good. However, just like with the fool's mate, um, there's something to be learned. There are learnings and insights that aren't that it's not related to this specific line. So it, so. Uh, transferable tactical ideas and the tactical idea here is really this weakness of the f pawns I mentioned before the f pawn at the beginning of the game is only defended by the king no other pieces and at the very beginning at the opening it may well be the case that the um, that yourself or the opponent hasn't developed in such a way to provide any extra defense. So in the opening, potentially that can be a target. Uh, and, and by targeting that weak f-pawn often is a uh, underlying basis for how a quick win occurs. Um, so it could be with a double attack with a bishop and queen, but not necessarily the case. Now I mentioned before uh, some uh, like you know, this doesn't work very well, but people often will use a wayward queen attack. You kind of see that all the way to the very early intermediate level. Uh, I recently got a game of the wayward queen attack. Uh, so here we go. Now I almost never see this now because I'm in the mid 1300s, but um, a probably a weird chess.com uh, matching gremlin. This is a uh, 15 plus 10 game of rapid and I got matched against someone rated in the 400s. I don't really know how that happened but my opponent with the white pieces as a beginner tri uh, tried the 
wayward queen attack against me. Uh, let's see why it potentially becomes such a problem. So, base we start as usual, e4, e5, and a wayward queen attack is rather than developing the bishop first, they immediately develop the queen as a forcing type move. Um, basically, black must respond to this. The queen is kind of in the wrong place, you know, and as I said, it is technically bad, but you have to know how to defend against this accurately. Now, the reason why the wayward queen attack is probably better than uh, playing the immediate bishop out if you're trying for a quick win. Now, the bishop's opening is a good opening, quite tricky, um, probably more sensible, but not if you're trying to particularly you know, get the scholars made. Like, you know, it's a good opening on its own right. Queen out here, you're pretty much trying for a quick win. It's a little bit more threatening at the beginning, uh, beginner sort of level, but as we'll see, it becomes a problem. Now here, sometimes the, uh, the player with the black pieces will go, oh, I want to attack that queen. So knight to attack, missing the fact that the queen is actually targeting the e-pawn. So queen captures e-pawn, with check. And basically white has now straight up won a piece on the second move and black is basically in some trouble. Uh, or even worse, they might try to attack the queen with g6, not knowing, you know, that, uh, remember, in the, uh, in the scholar's mate, g6 is a good attack, but you needed to have defended that pawn first. Because here you have check, but even worse, you're now going to win the rook. So here, you know, there are many ways for the, again, a wary player of the black pieces to stuff up and white basically gets ahead. Here, really, there's only one good move for black and that is to play the queen's knight. You have to defend against that pawn. Now here, my opponent, they're trying to get a quick win, you know, trying to double attack my f pawn, so they play the bishop. And what do we do now? Well, this transposes basically back to the scholar's mate line. And we know it's g6. We attack the queen, the queen has to move. And the thing here is, I mentioned before, there are only two good squares uh, potentially for the queen. It's f3 and d1. Now what's wrong with all the other squares? Well, let's look. Queen here doesn't work, gets taken by our bishop. Queen here doesn't work, taken by our queen. Queen here doesn't work, it's taken by our pawn. Here doesn't work, taken by our uh, taken by our queen. And in these two squares, in either of these two squares, the problem is that we now have d5. Pawn to d5, attacking the bishop, and also discovered attack by our bishop on the queen. Basically, uh, white will at least lose their bishop. So that doesn't work. And so we're left with this square and this square. They could go to this square as well, but it fundamentally isn't that good either. So in this game, my opponent played queen to f3. And the idea is they maintain a potential immediate mate threat. The very interesting thing here is when you analyze this game using stockfish at high depth, it actually says queen all the way back to d1 is best. Think about what that means um, uh, in terms of conceptually. So at a highly accurate play where the computer analyzes the game very deeply, the best move in this position for white is to immediately redo, do a redo, move the queen out all the way back to its beginning square, do a refresh, pretend you never took the queen out. So this is why, you know, at a high level and really from the intermediate level, the, the wayward queen attack simply doesn't work. Now, my opponent decided to play this. That's very normal. Like if you're gonna commit to the wayward queen attack, you're probably gonna try to win using, uh, using the wayward queen attack. It doesn't work outside a beginner because knight here blocks the queen. And here, one of the tactical ideas for early uh, opening attacks is trying to get the queen's knight to d4 or d5. It's one of the uh, op uh, one of the tactical ideas and themes in my book. And here we've got this attack firstly on the queen and also on that c2 uh, square, which is c pawn, 
which comes with an absolute fork of the king and rook. White doesn't see that, uh, that threat. So their best move is to move the uh, knight here to defend that square. They don't see it. They make a sensible looking developing move. But now knight d4 attacking the queen, attacking the pawn. And this is basically where for many beginner players trying to play the way with queen attack, they make a serious blunder. The best move here for white is to move the queen back to d1. So moving the queen out of the attack and defending the c1 square. For many people, they, uh, they will suffer um, a cognitive bias known as the sunk cost fallacy. Simply, they've invested now two moves, you know, uh, with the queen, sorry, here and here, that's a sunk cost. And so it, they, they just find it very difficult to uh, entertain the notion of undeveloping the queen. It feels like they've, they've invested in the queen movements, so they refuse to bring it back. But that is their best move. Uh, my opponent thinks for a little while, <laughs> tries to move the queen, you know, out of the attack, but that's a blunder. Do you see why? That's right. Knight captures the pawn on c2. This is a family fork. King, a rook, and queen. Now, obviously, we're not going to take the rook. They have to move the king out of the way, take the queen, and pretty much in this position, I have massive material advantage. And the game is fairly simple. It's, you know, develop pieces, attack white's king, which is now stuck in the center, if it's safe to do so. Uh, if it's not safe to do so, try to force piece straight and uh, try to get into an end game up a piece. Now in this game, immediately attack. Okay, I can take that, push back, that's fine, capture. I want to, you know, trade pieces down if I can. That's pinned as well. That gives a check, block. They develop the knight, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I could just take that, but I decided to give a check. Oh, oh sorry, check here first, and then give a check. Move the king, give a check. They move the knight. Now look at all my diagonal pieces. Uh, here, that knight is pinned, so place pressure on the pinned piece. They try to attack the queen, but that just weakens that dark square diagonal. Check, and now there's a mate in one. King moves to one of these two squares, but now the queen slips across, and that is mate. Good game, GG. I hope you enjoyed this first video. Uh, my book is available on Amazon, $13.99. I'm going to go through each of the tactical ideas and themes in my book as a separate video in the coming days and weeks. I hope you enjoy.